Alright, so today we're going to be talking about John Swan's response to technicals and why it sucks. Let me make a couple things clear. First of all, I do not support Zero, and I believe what he did was completely unacceptable. I say this because I mean it. This video is not meant to be any sort of defense for Zero's actions. I didn't think I'd have to say this, but considering the average IQ of a John Swan fan is between 1 and 24, I thought it was worth clarifying. I mean, these are the same people who popped off when Tech brought up the dream drama, which is literally synonymous with cheering because you got the free space on your bingo card. Anyways, the purpose of this video isn't to debunk John Swan's personal opinion that Zero should be deplatformed. This video is simply meant to debunk the idea that John's opinion is the only valid opinion. In his video, John makes several dishonest claims that don't paint an accurate picture of what Technicals is arguing, thus making his position sound ludicrous when it really isn't. There are many people in the commentary community that I can accept disagreement with because they are honest and argue in good faith. However, John is not one of those people. John's whole argument hinges on broken evidence. Despite being so confident in his claim that Zero asked Katie for the images, he has nothing to back it up besides Katie's word and Zero's confession. Katie was unable to provide any screenshots that could substantiate her claims, so her testimony alone is not hard proof of anything. This leaves Zero's confession, but what John fails to mention until the latter half of the video is that Zero actually walked back his confession. Zero claims that the confession was a suicide note meant to sabotage himself, and truly intended to take his own life after posting it. You have also probably heard of a so-called confession for my part. Simply put, this document is nothing more than a suicide letter that I wrote during a tremendous mental breakdown. I had fully planned to take my life right after posting that document because I pretty much lost all faith in that scenario, seeing so many of my close friends decided to take the situation, to throw me under the bus for personal gain, seeing how people were reacting in general, and me just feeling like I could not defend myself properly pretty much took the last bit of hope that I had left and I decided not just to give up but to sabotage myself on purpose. Technicals actually covers this in the video, but John chose to twist it by saying Technicals is trying to excuse Zero's behavior by manipulating the audience with a sob story. Technicals spends the next three minutes interviewing Zero and Vanessa recounting details about Zero's graphic suicide story. This entire section completely took me by surprise, and I can see it served no other purpose than to emotionally manipulate the audience to feel bad for Zero. John, you and I both know that was not the purpose of that section. What Technicals is saying is that if the confession is a suicide note, then it can't be used as evidence as it was a forced confession written under extreme mental distress. Even Zero's confession wouldn't hold up in court because it was made under extreme stress and outside pressure. Technicals is claiming that Zero was not of sound mind when giving his confession, so it's entirely possible that he admitted to things that he hadn't done. This is corroborated by the fact that Zero also admitted guilt to another situation where he was innocent. Keep in mind that the Laura situation was not in contention until Zero brought it up in his confession. He wasn't responding to an allegation when he wrote that bit, so why would he bring it up if he wasn't trying to sabotage himself as he claims? I also want to point out that this confession was not the first statement he made about Katie. Uh, he actually made a statement before this where he also addressed Leffen's allegations, but as you can see here it says, Specifically, I want to start by taking ownership and apologize to Jisoo, Katie, and Leffen for my actions. Leffen and Jisoo's allegations were not true, but he's taking ownership for them and apologizing. Why am I supposed to take Zero's confession at face value when there's reason to discard it? And he also has a history of admitting to and apologizing for things that he didn't do. Combined with the fact that Zero eventually did go on to attempt suicide, and I don't see why it's impossible to see this confession as a suicide note. But instead, John twists Technical's words to spell out he's downplaying Zero's behavior by making excuses for him. I can't tell if he's really just that dumb, or if he's intentionally missing the point so he can build a narrative, which is ironically what he accuses Technicals of doing. Surprisingly, Technical's video does not include a reading of the messages or do Katie's story justice at all, highlighting only 10% of Katie's 1,300 word twit longer. So 90% of the context is missing. It was at this point that I realized the Technical's was trying to build a narrative. Obviously, I'm talking about it because it's it's a narrative. Every video that talks about shit like this is a narrative, obviously. Oh, and by the way, what he just said about omitting 90% of the twit longer, well, even that is a half-truth because while it is true that Tech did this, he actually shows screenshots of what those omitted parts are referring to anyways, so that point was ultimately irrelevant. Meanwhile, John is literally taking information that isn't verifiably true and pushing it as indisputable fact while I'm supposed to sit here and call technicals the dishonest 
hardest one building a narrative. Just to remind you, when he was 19, Zero groomed a 14-year-old girl for months and pressured her to send him pictures of her performing sex acts. Yeah, dude, he just kind of tripped and fell and groomed a minor for like three months and asked her to shove ice up her pussy. And saying that no images were exchanged is just poisoning the well. He asked for them. It doesn't matter if the girl sent them or not. The intent was still there. Zero never exchanged images with Katie, which is his worst perceived crime to this day. He asked for them. Doesn't matter if he didn't receive any. The intent was still there. How many times do I have to go over this? We don't know whether or not Zero asked Katie for the pictures, but you present it in your video as if it was proven true. If that isn't dishonest, then I don't know what is. John claims throughout his video that Technicals is trying to downplay Zero's actions to make him seem innocent. What Technicals is trying to do is understand the source of why Zero did the things he did. He doesn't think Zero flirted with Katie because he maliciously seeks out vulnerable children. He thinks it's because Zero was a confused 19 year old that didn't know what was and wasn't appropriate to say in conversation to someone who's that young. What I'm trying to say is that I don't believe this to be the result of a specific or malicious preference, as is the case with repeat offenders such as pedophiles and discord mods. What I think we're looking at is a culmination of a fucked up childhood and trauma resulting in emotional immaturity and a lack of genuine and fulfilling relationships. If you look at Zero's upbringing and the relationships he grew up in and around, this conclusion starts to make some sense. And when you consider the fact that Zero's behavior isn't, to our knowledge at the time of this video, a recurring pattern and it might be fair to say that Zero isn't a current danger to children. But throw all that out the window, because John Swan is here to tell us what Tech is actually trying to do. It's pretty apparent that Tech is making excuses for Zero throughout. Oh yeah, he might have asked a 14 year old girl to stick ice up her pussy, but did you know he tried to kill himself? He may have groomed her for months, but did you know how messed up his childhood was? Like, it's just so blatant. Tech doesn't even try to hide it. Tech interviews some of Zero's friends and Zero himself to try and give some context as to why he's socially awkward and shouldn't be held to the same standard as the rest of us. Yada, yada, yada. None of this excuses Zero's behavior. Do I condone the conversations that took place? No, and I hope I've made that very clear. But come on, let's not beat around the bush here. He did not make this clear, like, at all. Didn't make it clear? In the messages we are provided, it's very clear that Zero is being flirtatious. And according to the dates, he knew her age at the time. I'm not going to read them, but these messages on screen are 100% unacceptable, and he'll be the first to tell you that. By rebranding the arguments Tech gives as excuses meant to hold Zero to a different standard than everyone else, he's able to repackage Tech's video in a way that makes it sound completely ludicrous. We saw how he did this with Zero's suicide note, but then there are times where he straight up lies in order to make his points. I'll first play John Swan's retelling, then play the original video to see if you can spot the difference. Tech spends the next six minutes discussing Nairo. And to be fair to him, the section is honestly pretty good. This is what he's best at, dissecting responses critically, something that I wish he'd done in his section on Katie. However, this section also serves another purpose, and that is to make Zero's case more palatable. Because the Smash community welcomed Nairo back without much reservation, due to a legal document that apparently exists that no one has ever seen, he implies that Zero should also return, because what he did was apparently not as bad. Allegedly, some people think you fucked a kid. What other inspiration would you need to plaster this to every corner of the internet? I'm just saying, if I was a Smash figurehead, which I am, I would just keep someone banned if they don't want to publicly prove they're innocent. This is a gaming community. This is not a behind closed doors legal issue. This is a would parents look at this and approve issue. Fucking idiots, it's not complicated. Well, those two clips certainly paint completely different pictures. Tech would also go on to make a video titled Ban Nairo. It is clear that Tech's argument is that Nairo should be banned as well, yet John reframes this in a way that makes it sound like Tech wants Zero to be unbanned. Let's just use our brains for two seconds. Which seems more likely? A. Tech wants two potential predators back in the community, or B. Tech wants them both banned. First off, just to clarify, when I say welcome back Zero, I mean welcome back to uploading content, not to Smash events. Despite me never making that argument, I think it's worth clearing up.
Now we get to the brother argument, which is probably the dumbest argument because it falls apart with even a smidgen of common sense, yet the commentary community loves to cling on hard to it. Now that John has established that Tech is defending and making excuses for Zero, he now tries to go to the root of his motivations. Last year, allegations of sexual misconduct were levied against Technical's brother known online as Turtle SSB or BJ. The allegations stated that in 2016, BJ had sent Not Safe For Work art and news of himself to a group chat with the miners in it. If Tech had to come out and wholeheartedly condemn Zero, he would have had to condemn his brother as well. But he condemned his brother, both privately and publicly. At the specific period they're referencing in the twit longer, I remember this because me, along with everyone else, came to BJ and told him that was a really fucking stupid thing to do. Don't do something like that again because we are in a group chat where, you know, it might be bad for other people. Told him it was stupid, never to do it again, and guess what? He didn't do it again. Hey, it's John from the future here. This isn't even true. If we look back in the screenshot, that were provided with the twit longer, we can see that the first time BJ did this was the 24th of December 2016. And then he did it again on February the 18th, 2017. So he did do it again. That's just a complete and utter lie from technicals. Imagine calling someone a liar while lying yourself. Here are the messages Tech showed when he claimed he condemned his brother and told him to stop. As you can see, they are dated after February 18th, so unless you can show me proof that his brother continued after March 28th, 2017, then Technicals is indeed telling the truth. The bottom line is that if Technicals condemned his brother, which he did, why would he have trouble condemning Zero? In fact, as proven in the prior section, he did condemn Zero several times throughout the video. So what's the issue? Let's recap. John asserts that Tech is excusing and downplaying Zero's behavior in an attempt to defend him. He backs up his claims with faulty evidence and repackages Technical's arguments such as his arguments against Nairo. John also claims that Tech didn't condemn his brother's behavior in the group chats despite there being hard evidence to the contrary. He also blames Tech for enabling some of the conversations that happened in chats Tech wasn't a part of. John then makes the argument that Tech can't condemn Zero because he would have to condemn his brother as well despite the fact that Tech did both. This line of logic is a fallacy known as presupposing a frame. What John does is he assumes we've agreed to his first two points, and if that's the case, then the last point that tech can't condemn zero would actually make sense. But if we dig deeper into the root of the issue to find that his assertions are based on broken evidence and lies, we realize that this whole argument collapses. And I'm not even nitpicking here. This line of thinking was very essential to the video, and John dedicated large chunks of the video to explain himself. When the crux of your video is built on lies and deception, it means you've made a terrible video. Throughout Technical's time of creating investigations into Smash, I believe that he's done some genuinely great work. Some people have unreasonably had their reputations completely ruined and deserve a second chance. Technical's was able to vindicate these people, and with that, he achieved a certain level of credibility within the space. John Swan is the last person to enlighten us about credibility. He is a known manipulator and liar who will do anything to avoid accountability until he corners himself from all his lies and gives an insincere apology. The fact that John has to lie this much in order to make his point shows that this goes beyond credibility. This is about integrity. John Swan, you have no integrity at all. You purposefully omit key information and present lies based upon broken evidence as if it's indisputable proof and expect an expert like me to blindly believe what you are saying. You can't educate me on something I know better than you do. I've been a part of the Smash community for five years and was there during the Me Too movement of July 2020. There is nothing you can say that I don't have an answer for. So when you present these lies in front of me, I realize that you haven't changed since you bullied a 15 year old almost to suicide, then claimed he was suicide baiting when he didn't actually attempt it. You are in fact still the same dishonest manipulator that took advantage of his friend's trust to protect himself, which reminds me of another person that you referred to as human, human garbage. garbage. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.